Hello, I'm Bruce Cheney, and today in Homemade Science, I thought I'd show you some demonstrations in the idea of free fall and weightlessness. Now, when this topic is discussed, the most common example that's given is somebody that's in an elevator, top of a building, and the cable cuts and it starts to fall. Now, to show that elevator demonstration, it's actually kind of simple. In this case, I use a wooden frame representing the elevator. I would hold an object, for example, it could be this little guy here, and I would simply hold them both up at height and drop them and observe what happens to them as they fall. Now, of course, I don't want this landing on the floor. It would break it. So I would put down some type of cushion. Watching it in slow motion, we see the little person inside the elevator maintains the same position as both objects fall. To make it a little bit easier to see, I could use this golf ball. Now my other possibility is this guy here. This figure has a weak spring, which is just strong enough to push him up into the center of the elevator while it's in free fall. Now this guy I don't have to hold. I simply drop the elevator and observe what happens. Now let's take a look at why he stays in the center. If we can ignore the air resistance, gravity is the only force acting on both the elevator and the person that's falling inside of it. This bathroom scale on weight can help show this. While it's stationary, the scale measures the amount of force needed to support it, but the moment we let go, the scale's reading drops down to zero. Now that was a little bit too hard on that scale, so let's try it a different way. Here's a dial scale, and it has a soda can attached to it, and the soda can's about 3.7 newtons, and I can simply let this fall, and maybe that'll be a little bit easier to see. Once again, the moment I let go, we can see that scale immediately drops back to reading zero. As long as they're accelerating, there is no normal force acting on the can. The same is true for both the elevator and the person inside. They're both accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared. The difference in mass of the objects doesn't affect its acceleration. The same would hold true in a real elevator if it were free falling. And it's also why the astronauts are weightless while they're in the International Space Station. Now let's see what happens when we drop these two water bottles. The one weighs twice as much as the other. The reason that the lighter object and heavier object can fall at the same rate can be explained by Newton's second law. It tells us if we divide the force of Earth's gravity on an object by its mass, we'll always come up with the same acceleration, 9.8 meters per second squared. So with no air resistance, the mass of the object doesn't make a difference. It was Galileo that supposedly first demonstrated this concept by dropping light objects and heavy objects from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. He found them landing together. Here it is on a smaller scale. The larger ball is eight times more massive than the smaller one. So it has eight times more inertia, but it also has eight times more force pulling it towards the ground. So they fall together. Now, of course, in certain situations, we can't ignore this idea of air resistance. For example, if I were to drop this book and this feather, As expected, the book's going to fall much faster. So in certain situations, the friction of air does play a big factor. 
but under the right conditions we can get this feather and book to accelerate together. Now how do we do that? The answer is to keep air from hitting the feather and reaching the terminal velocity. Now there's a couple of different ways that this can happen, but a simple way of doing it is to block the air by placing it on top of the book and then dropping them together. Now if we can exclude objects that have a lot of air resistance, there are some other examples that students can try to test Galileo's theories. Here's a good example. Try dropping a cup filled with water. Of course I should mention that the cups have holes in it. And what we want to do is we want to watch what happens to the stream as the cup is falling. Now when we do this demonstration, I like to add some cornstarch to some water. It's going to make it easier to see. It's also a good idea if you're doing this inside, put a lid on it with a hole in it. This will reduce the splash up when the cup lands. Release the stream, and then simply drop it. Notice that the stream can no longer flow out of the cup once it starts to fall. The cups and the water droplets are both accelerating at the same rate. That's why as it's falling, none of it comes out. Now while we can do this activity inside, this is really a great activity to try outside. It gives us the opportunity to put more holes in the cups, and it also allows us to go larger. Let's try that once more. This time in a five gallon bucket, and I'll add some red dye to it to make it easier to see. Now something else to observe in pre-fall is a slinky. We'll be taking a closer look at slinkies and other springs as they fall in a future video. We'll also take a look at the behavior of spring scales versus pan balances under accelerated motion. If you enjoyed this video and I also hope you'll try some of these experiments for yourself. As always, I want to thank you for watching and come back and see us again. Okay, bye.